In this video, we're going to talk about the AP Calculus AB exam from 2011, and specifically the free response question number two. Um, this is a calculator allowed question, so we will be using the calculator here. Uh, all right, so they give us this table with T in minutes and H of T in degrees Celsius and a couple different data points there. And it says, as a pot of T cools, the temperature of the T is modeled by a differentiable function H for t between 0 and 10, where time t is measured in minutes and temperature h of t is measured in degrees Celsius. Values of h of t at selected values of time t, no, I don't need to read the whole thing, you can read. <laughs> anyway, so we've got this table in question, uh, the first question in part a says use the data in the table to approximate, approximate is the key word here, approximate the rate at which the temperature of the T is changing at time T equals 3.5. Show the compu computations that lead to your answer. So like I said, the key is where it says approximate the rate. Um, when we're approximating the rate, all, we're, all they're looking for is the slope, which is a rate of change between two points. Um, 3.5 is right here in between 2 and 5. Now, we, know, we don't know that this is a linear equation. In fact, I think we know that it's not um, based on the, the rates of change here. But all we can really do is say, okay, well, from, six, from time 2 to time 5, we went from 60 degrees to 52 degrees. So what's that rate of change? It's not going to be exactly the rate of change at 3.5. It's going to be approximate. So let's just... Show them the calculations. Computations, they said, but that's fine. So for part A, we're just going to do 52 minus 60 over 5 minus 2. Literally just calculating the slope between these two points. And when we do that, we get negative 8 over 3, and that's going to be degrees per minute. And that's all. Um, so that's part A. Going on to part B. In part B, it says, using correct units, explain the meaning of this integral in the context of this problem. Then use a trapezoidal sum with the, fir with the four subintervals indicated by the table to estimate that integral. Well, if we remember, um, that just means the average temperature. Um, well, I should back up. This expression should look familiar to us. It should look like what we know is the average value of a function formula. So that's all this means. It means the average value of this function, h of t, on the interval from 0 to 10. It just so happens that H represents degrees, so this means the average degrees Celsius of the temperature of the T for this 10 minute interval. So we need to write that down. Represents the average temperature of the T in degrees Celsius for time between 0 and 10. That's what it means. Um, we should just recognize again this formula, this format, where this is 1 over 10 and this is from 0 to 10, and we have the integral as the formula for finding the average value of a function. It just so happens that this function represents average temperature, or this function represents temperature of the T in degrees Celsius. Putting the function inside that formula gives us the average value. That's all. Uh, and then use a trapezoidal sum with four subintervals indicated by the table to actually estimate this average value. So when we do a trapezoid, we know that the area of a trapezoid is one-half base one plus base two 
times the height. So just to write out all the work that I'm actually going to be doing here, we have one half for the first interval, that's going to be 66 plus 60 times the height, 0 to 2. Now, just to make sure we're clear, the function values of the two bases and the height is actually the change in x. Uh, in a trapezoid, the two bases must be parallel. Um, so those are the two y values on the graph as we go uh, up the curve. Then we just add in the next one. So again, it's going to be 1 half, oops, 1 half, and then this time it's going to be 60 plus 52, and this time that's a change of 3, so the height is now 3. Then plus 1 half, and 52 plus 44, times, this time the change is 4, and I don't have enough room here because I write too big on this thing. So then plus another one half of 44 plus 43. And this time the height is just 1. When we multiply all that out, we get 529.5. That's not the final answer, though, because then we need to take one-tenth of that to account for the one-tenth that's giving us the average value here. So one-tenth of 529.5 is, of course, 52.95, and this is degrees Celsius. So that is the average value of temperature of the T for the first 10 minutes here. And that's what they wanted in part B. Moving on to part C. Right. Now in part C, they want us to evaluate this new integ integral here. And what we have to recognize, one of the things you always have to focus on um, during your free response questions, and the multiple choice as well actually, but throughout the whole exam, is be careful about what function they're talking about. Now they've switched in here to h prime of t. It was last time h of t, and the data up here is about h of t. But now they're asking us about h prime, so we've got to make sure we focus on that. Always just be very careful, and of course it's easy to miss because it's such a little prime, little tiny little thing there, but uh, be careful with that. All right. Now, because they're asking us for the integral of h prime, I know that that's just h. So when I write this out, the integral from 0 to 10 of h prime of t dt, well, the antiderivative of h prime is just h. So this is just h of t evaluated from 0 to 10. So I just need to plug in 10 and 0 and find the difference here. And that difference is negative 23 degrees. Well, we can show that work real quick here. h of 10 is 43. h of 0 is 66. So that's negative 23 degrees Celsius. Um, and it says, using correct units, explain the meaning of this expression in the context of this problem. Anytime you take the integral of a rate of change, you're getting the net change. And so if we're taking the integral of h prime, which is, of course, a rate of change, it's a derivative, I'm getting the net change or the total change in temperature. So what this represents is the total change in degrees Celsius on the interval. So this means the total change in temperature was negative 23 degrees Celsius on the interval from 0 to 10. There we go.
So that's both parts. And always make sure that you do answer both parts of a question. First, evaluate. Then, using correct units, explain the meaning of this expression in the context of this problem. Um, and when they say in the context of this problem, they're meaning don't just tell us in general what this integral would mean. In general, it would mean the net change of some quantity. Specific to this problem, it means uh, the net change in temperature, net or total change. Right, and that's part C. On to part D. All right. Now it says at time t equals zero, biscuits with temperature 100 degrees Celsius were removed from oven. The temperature of the biscuits at time t is modeled by a differentiable function b, for which it is known that b prime of t, again, we're focusing on the fact that this is b prime, not b, b prime of t is equal to negative 13.84e to the negative 0.173t. Using the given models, at time t equals 10, how much cooler are the biscuits than the t? Well, we already know from the table that at time t equals 10, the t is 43 degrees. So we know that from up here. We know that here. Now we need to figure out what's the temperature of the biscuits. Well, we know that the biscuits started at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's circle that. And then this is their rate of change. So what we need to do is we need to take the 100 and then add that to the to the integral of the rate of change, which is going to give us the net change in temperature. So we're going to do, we're going to say that B of 10, the temperature of the biscuits at time 10, is going to equal 100, their starting temperature, plus the integral from 0 to 10 of B prime of T, which is negative 13.84 e to the negative 0 0.173 t dt. And this is the calculator section, like I mentioned before, so you, we can just plug this into our calculator. When we do that, we get b of 10 about 34.183 degrees Celsius. So, the difference between the two, the T is uh, still at 43 degrees, which we talked about up here. The biscuits are at 34, so we just need to look at how much cooler are the biscuits than the T, so just subtract. We knew that the biscuits were going to be cooler, but how much cooler? Let's subtract. So, T minus biscuits, so that's going to be 43 minus 34.183 and that gives us an approximate answer of 8.817 degrees Celsius when we subtract. And that's our final answer. That's how much cooler the biscuits are than the tea. Um, it didn't ask us to explain or justify but it is always good to show the work here so definitely want to show that. But again, just because they've asked us to find how much cooler the biscuits are, we first had to find the temperature of the biscuits, which was the initial temperature plus the rate of or the, the net change. The net change being the antiderivative of the rate of change. And that's just a very, very common type of question on the AP exam. They give you the rate of change, they want to know how much something has changed, you integrate it. They want to know what the actual temperature is then you include the starting temperature, or whatever it is, uh, starting volume or price, whatever it is. But the integral of the rate of change is always going to be the total change in that quantity. All right, and that is the 2011 AP Calculus AB exam for your response question number two.